So I believe Apple's first product launch of 2025 is going to be all about their best-selling laptop, the MacBook Air. Let's talk about everything we know so far and what is gonna be new. Let's get into it. So you may or may not have noticed, but when Apple released their brand new M4 Mac Mini late last year, they kind of changed up the listing when it came to the M3 MacBook Air. So the M3 and M2 MacBook Air are still currently for sale directly from Apple, but before the M4 Mac Mini, the baseline storage or the baseline memory was 8 gigs of RAM. But after the M4 Mac Mini was launched, if you notice on the website, those 8 gig of unified memory models are no longer there, and the base models, even for the M2 version, is going to be the 16 gigabytes of RAM. Because I do believe this is all gonna to be to future-proof themselves moving forward when it comes to Apple intelligence and all the things that come alongside that. So right now on Apple's website, you can get an M2 16 gigs of unified memory MacBook Air for $999, and then the M3 version with the same 16 gigs of unified memory, which maxes out at 24 gigs of unified memory, is now $1099. So again, these aren't new laptops, but it's something that they changed up without really telling anybody, which is always good to know because I remember I purchased my M2 MacBook Air with 16 gigs of unified memory about two, three years ago whenever it released, and it cost me about $1,400 for that spec upgrade. So now in is going to come the new M4 MacBook Air. From a design standpoint, it's going to look pretty much identical. It's going to have the same form factor, the same weight, the same size, the same colorways, the same thickness, and it's still going to come in a 13.6 and 15.4 variant in terms of screen display diagonally. But the first update we're going to have is not going to be to the lower end of the unified memory. It's actually going to be to the max end of the unified memory. So the M4 MacBook Air will start with 16 gigs unified RAM, and they'll probably drop off the M2 Air and still offer the M3 Air, but the new M4 Air will have a max of 32 gigs of unified memory instead of that 24 gig. So being able to future-proof yourself a little bit further is always nice to have when it comes to adding RAM in these computers, because I do think Apple's gonna really ramp up all of their Apple intelligence stuff to make it even more task-intensive on the laptop and on the computer, so the more RAM, the better in my opinion. Another thing that's going to be improved is going to be the battery life of these M4 MacBook Airs because as we saw with the M4 MacBook Pros, we actually got efficiency gains so good that it's offering up to two hours of additional battery life when those M4 MacBook Pros were released. So the same thing will be said about the M4 MacBook Airs. We should expect the same type of efficiency that we got with the M4 MacBook Pros because again, the chassis isn't changing, the form factor isn't changing, the battery size probably isn't changing either. So just making it more efficient overall and reducing the thermals and making the thermals even better should result in a better battery life or an already great battery life for a laptop with the MacBook Air. And I think the 15 inch MacBook Air, the M4 version is going to be the battery king of Apple laptops when it comes to longevity from a battery life perspective. Now this next one is going to be what I'm most excited for and it's going to be the ability to expand to multiple monitors while keeping the display of the MacBook Air open. So if you guys do recall when the original M1 MacBook Air released, it only supported one external display because apparently Apple couldn't support that from the M1 chip and that stayed true with the M2 chip. And then the M3 chip did allow for two external display supports, but you had to have the actual laptop closed and have it in clamshell mode. So you were able to kind of treat this as a desktop solution by closing the MacBook Air, plugging in some USB-C cables, maybe daisy chaining, and then being able to use two external monitors. So that in its own right was relatively impressive, but again, most laptops can already do this, and it was annoying they had to keep it closed, because I know a lot of people like to have maybe their laptop in the center and then have two displays above them, so you're still using the mouse and keyboard of the laptop, so this meant that if you wanted to use two external monitors with the M3 MacBook Air, then you needed to have an additional keyboard and an additional external mouse in order to, again, interact and put inputs to those two external monitors through the MacBook Air. But now with the M4 version, this should be enough to support not only those same two displays, but then also keep your laptop open so you can have that perfect scenario of having your laptop right in the middle, controlling it as your base station, and then having those two external displays up and running while being able to have that display on your laptop open. And the next upgrade is going to be to the camera. So Apple finally gave us a much better specced out camera compared to the 720p camera that they've had for years and years. But one thing that's still missing, and it's gonna be the only camera that's missing this currently in the laptop lineup is going to be center stage. Center stage debuted alongside the iPad Pro to again, kind of allow or to mitigate the issue of having to look to the bottom left when in landscape mode of the iPad Air and when you're using things like FaceTime and Zoom calls and basically whenever you're video chatting. So that is where Center Stage came from, and then it was added to all the other laptops. So the M4 MacBook Pro has it, the M4 iMac has it, even I believe the Studio Display has Center Stage. So basically it's an ultra-wide lens and then crops in by default, 
allowing you to kind of act as a gimbal when you are moving around. So if your head is moving or if you are standing up and moving around, the camera will quote unquote follow you around. Even though it isn't actually physically moving, it's kind of just moving it around and kind of honing on your head inside of the cropped lens for the viewing angles. And then lastly, one of our writers in 9to5Mac did put a bonus category in here in terms of what to expect with the M4 MacBook Airs, and that's going to be the nano texture display. Now, I recently went to an Apple store and saw the nano texture display in person, and I'll be honest, I thought it was absolutely amazing. Now, a lot of people love the glossy look, or we've had the glossy look for a while, but even on a display that you don't actually physically touch with your fingers at all, we still are able to get a ton of fingerprints on the displays of these MacBook Airs, because I guess when you open it or when you're brushing something off, so having a glossy display is going to help obviously with the fingerprints of touching the display, but also it's going to dissipate any light that's hitting it. So the reflections are going to be way, way less when it comes to using a MacBook Air, especially if you're around a lot of windows or in a very sunny environment. So a nano texture display option I think should come to the M4 MacBook Air, but let's see if exactly it's going to come. We're very confident about the first four that I mentioned, which is going to be battery life, center stage, the max RAM, and then finally that expanded extended display support. But being able to have a nano texture display is something that I would definitely welcome on a MacBook Air and would gladly play the extra $100 or $200 for that additional upgrade. But those are the main things that we should expect with the M4 MacBook Air and it should be the first release that Apple has in 2025. So let me know with a comment down below what you think. Are you excited about the M4 MacBook Air? Do you currently have an M series MacBook Air? Is it warranted of an upgrade for you? Let me know with a comment down below because I'm always curious to know what's worth it for you, what you're looking for in a new MacBook Air, and how often people do actually upgrade their MacBooks moving forward. But that'll do it, everybody. If you made it to the end, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below so I know you made it to the end. And if you want to watch more videos like this one, definitely check out one of these videos right here. And until next time, I'm Fernando, and I'm out of here, everybody. Peace. And for MacBook Airs, should be a fun one.